Hello everyone, I'm going to show you simple steps that you could follow to help you to use in vivo to conduct thematic analysis. Let me give you a general information about thematic analysis. It's all about going through the data, identify patterns and developing calls and also generating themes so that you'll be able to address your research question. And the themes should represent the information that you have in the data at the same time addressing the research question that you have. One of the types of thematic analysis is reflexive thematic analysis, which is developed by Brown and Clark. I'm going to post a link to this article in the description section. So when you go there, you can also get access to this article. And looking at this article, Brown and Clark provided six phases of thematic analysis. The first phase is data familiarization, right? So this is where you go to your data and familiarize yourself with the data. And then what you have to do sometimes is to take notes, right? So you see an example here, as you are going through the data, you are taking notes. Anything that is important for you to document, you'll be able to document any reflections. You can also provide that information, take notes so that maybe you can come back and look at it. Phase two is generating initial codes. This process involves going through the data again and trying to identify information that are significant, information that will help you to address your research question. And based on that information or the um, excepts that you have extracted, you develop a code to represent that information, right? So code can be a phrase, that is representing the information at the same time addressing your research question that you have. Then there's another phase, which is the third phase. This is generating themes. After developing codes, you can review the codes and see whether you can find any patterns in the codes that you have. And sometimes you have to go back to the data and look at it again. And based on that, you can generate themes that represent the information that is in the data. At the same time, also reflect the codes that you have developed. And you'll be using the themes to help you to address your research question. The phase four is where you review the themes. You look at the characteristics, go into the data and see whether the theme reflects what is in the data. Sometimes as you are reviewing, you can also make changes to the themes. You can reconstruct the themes, making sure that they really are addressing the research question and also representing the information that you have. And phase five is where you define the theme. So now that you have the theme, what does the theme represent? What is the meaning of the theme? What are the characteristics of the themes? How does the themes address the research question that you have? How does the theme represent the information that you have? So this is where you define the theme. And the last phase will be presenting the findings. So this article will be very helpful for you. As I said, I'll put the article in the description section so that you can get access to it. Let's go to in vivo. So what do you have to do when you want to do reflexive thematic analysis and you want to use in vivo to analyze your data? The first step is to open in vivo. When you open, you can give it the project name. So the project name could be project one and in parentheses you can say phase one and two right the reason why you have to write phase one and two is that you are saying that for this project i'm going to focus on familiarizing myself with the data and also developing initial codes right so you can even in the description you can say focusing on data familiarization and development of initial codes. Just, you know, help you to you know that this project is for phase one and two, and you have given a description, then you go to next and you go to create. When you go to create, this is what you're going to see, phase one and two. So as you can see, the phase one and two is only familiarizing yourself with the data and also developing initial codes. So what you have to do is that, you know, when you open a new project, you can go to import and click on files, and then you can import the information or the transcript that you have. You go and look for the transcript or the document that you want to import. You click on the first one, click on shift and click on the last one so that you can select all of them and go to open. You can click here to create cases for 
each of the imported file and you can give it a name. You can say participant and then you can click on import. So here you have imported your data that you have to go to. So as you know, the first step is to familiarize yourself with the data. So you can go through each of them. If you want to take note, you can do that. One way of taking note is you can select the place that you want to write about and then right click and go to new annotation, right? And then you can start typing information here, right? I think this is what is going on. So you can write your thoughts. You can go here. If you see anything that is interesting, you can right click and go to new annotation and then start writing about it. So that's how you can use annotation. We are in the first stage, thinking through the data, reflecting, and also trying to make sure that you understand what the participant is saying. And if any idea comes in mind, anything you want to document, you can use the function annotations. Alternatively, you can use memos. The memo function is another way of documenting your reflections. I normally will use annotation when you're trying to make sense of participant information, trying to document your understanding of what is going on. And then you can use memo to document your reflections, right? What is going through your mind as you are going through the data? Or you can choose memo to do your reflection and also documentation of what you see in the data. You just have to choose the one that you feel comfortable. You can use both or you can use one of the functions. So if you want to use memo, you just select the place that you want to write about, right click, and I can go to links and then memo link. If you have an existing memo that you want to write this information, you can go there. If you don't have any existing memo, you want to create a new one, you can go to link to new memo. And then you name the memo, right? You can just say my reflections about P1 information, anything that you want to write that you'll remember. You can give a description and then you click on OK. So when you click on OK, a page will be open for you. Now you can write your reflections. So these are the two ways of documenting your thoughts, documenting your understanding of the data or documenting the significant information that you want to take note of so that maybe you can come back and reflect on it. So it's very important for you to document your thoughts and your understanding as you are going through the data, just to familiarize yourself with what you are reviewing. Imagine that you finish going through all the data, you have a big picture of the data. The next step that you have to think about is developing codes. How do you do that? You can double click on one of the data and you can go through, if this information is significant, you just select it and you can go to code and start the coding process. I have a video that shows how to do the coding process. One thing that you could do is that if you have research questions, you can develop containers for each of the research question and then develop codes under their respective research question. And I have a video that shows the step-by-step -step how to develop codes. So imagine that you have finished the first and the second phase of the reflexive thematic analysis, this is what you will see. As you can see here, the data is about burnout and the research question was about the causes and the solutions. So if, as you can see, I created a container for each of the research question. The research question one was, what are the causes of burnout? And the research question two, what are the solutions of burnout? As you can see here, I've developed codes, right? That are uh, helping me to address my research question. Imagine that you have finished the phase one and phase two. What do you have to do next? Phase three is about developing themes, so going through the data and going through the codes that you have and find ways of looking into the patterns and developing themes. Before you go into the next step, this is what you're going to do, right? You're going to create another project called Project 2, Phase 3 and 4. Remember, the Phase 3 and 4 for the thematic analysis is developing themes and then reviewing potential themes. Let me bring the article so that you see what I'm talking about. So we finished Phase 1 and 2. 
we are going to face three generating themes and we also have to do phase four which is reviewing potential themes so after generating the themes what you have to think about is you have to review them making sure that they reflect the data that you have coded right and also addressing the research question that you have the next step that you have to do is to create project two how do you create a project two you just copy this project and then rename it how do you do that you go to file and you go to copy project and you want to look for the location where you want to put this information you can browse and then save it where you will find that information so here you have to give it a file name the file name here will be project two phase three and four remember phase three is about developing themes phase four is about reviewing the themes and making sure that they reflect the significant information that you have extracted from the data and also they represent the codes that you have put under the themes that you have right so now we have phase three and four you look for a place to save that information so let's save it here for now and then click on okay now that you have saved that information you have the project one open so you can close project one and then we look for project two where is project two yeah i have it here so i double click on it and then i can open and go to project two which has two phases, phase three and four. Now we have project two. So what you have to do is that you have to go through and then look at the characteristics of each of the codes here, and then you can be able to develop themes based on what you have here. And also sometimes you have to double click and go to what is in the container, what is in the code, so that you can see the characteristics of each of the codes and you'll be able to do the categorizing and developing themes. You can export all the codes and then do the categorization outside in Vivo and bring it back. I have a video if you want to know how to do the data categorization and bring the themes back to in Vivo, you'll be able to follow the steps. So imagine that we have gone through everything, developed themes, addressing the research question that we have. What do we have to do? So let me show you the final product, how the final product looks like. As you can see here, I have my four themes addressing my first research question and another themes addressing my second research question. And I click here, you can see the codes under them, right? So now this is what the third phase looks like. Then the fourth phase is to review each of them and making sure that they truly reflect the data that you have and also addressing the research question, right? How do you do that? You can double click and then see what is in the container. If you change your mind concerning the label for the theme, you can right click on the theme and go to code properties. And then you'll be able to make any changes that you want to make. If you want to change your mind concerning, maybe you think that, okay, this theme maybe can be dropped under this, the second theme, you can just drag and drop it into the second theme or the third theme if you want. That's how you're going to go through the fourth phase. So the fourth phase is reviewing the theme that you have and making sure that it best reflects the data that you have and also addressing the research question. There's a lot of flexibility here. You can change the name for the themes if you want, but the most important is to make sure that they are doing two things. They are addressing the research question that you have at the same time representing the significant information that was assigned to it. We move to stage five and six. Stage five is about looking at the themes again and now this time you are going to define the theme. You're going to define it in terms of what the theme represents and how the themes are addressing the research question that you have, right? This is a very crucial time because the phase five process will help you 
to make sure that you'll be able to present your findings in a meaningful manner. Phase five and six, what do you have to do? You go to files and click on copy project, and then you go to browse, and then you choose the place that you want to save that information. And this time we're going to say project three, phases five and six, right? When you finish, you click on save, and then you click on OK. Now that you are done, you can go back and open that project. So we are we are focusing on project three now. And then what we can do is that we're going to review each of the themes, define them, and also provide the characteristics and any information that you want to document so that it can help you to present your findings. We go to quotes and then we see that information. What do you have to do in terms of defining it? You can right click on the theme and go to code properties. And then here, this is where you can provide some information about the theme that you have. This theme is being new to the profession. What is your definition of being new to the profession? Considering the significant information that you have selected that are connected to this theme, right? And also you can give more explanation considering the research question that you want to address. Why do you have to define it? Because a theme can have many meanings. So it's very important as a researcher to define it so that you and the reader will be on the same page in terms of what this theme represents. So defining it is very important. You can use this space to define the theme. You can also provide how this theme addressed the research question. By providing this information, you are starting the process of presenting your findings. Now you have the meanings. The last stage that you have to think about is exporting all these themes and start presenting your findings. So that's how you can use in vivo to conduct reflexive thematic analysis. I hope this one was helpful for you. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section. I'll be happy to address them for you. Thank you for your time.